At least he didn't say Freddie Mercury was the lead singer of Journey. <laughs> Journey? Come on. No. Dee -dee 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 -dee. Don't stop believing. I need a song I figured it was sung by somebody. Steve Perry! Dee -dee Looking down the boulevard, their shadows searching in the night. Okay, guys. Mike, don't stop recording. I am recording this. So. Don't stop recording. Oh, no. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubblegum. Go ahead. Make my day. Cinema Royale. Hello, welcome to Cinema Royale, where this is the only cinema where you can bring your own snacks. Yay! I'm your host, Mike Mixtape, and this, my friends, is our second debate of geekiness on this podcast. The first time we did it was Star Trek vs. Star Wars. And uh, Marvel vs. DC is a big topic, so we had to bring in an awesome guest, like the first guest ever on this podcast, but I'll get into that later on here. Um, Marvel's kicking ass around with cinema, and I figure we kind of mix it up a notch with other medias to make it fair for DC. So it's going to be an interesting discussion tonight. Um, so here we go. Let me introduce you to my awesome film of fish shadows of the podcast. First up, we've got my favorite Canadian of all... Matt Brunet, also known as Animat. Hey guys, I'm pretty much ready. Well, honestly, this is my only, I think this is my only comic book t-shirt, but this is like the one I could e find the easiest, so yeah, I'm partially Batman. I'm Batman. Tell me, do you bleed? Because you will. Mm. Oh, yes I do. As will many others. Next up is Morgan Ledger. Hi hey everyone, and if you remember previously, I was freaking out in fear because of tonight's guest, and there's unfortunately one good reason why. Mm -hmm. His servo is bigger than mine. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. Now guys, let's not turn this entire podcast into a servo measuring contest. So saying. I don't. So I don't think there's any oh. way I can outdo that unless. Oh, what do I have here? Oh, your Howard the Duck script. Okay. Yeah, that that beats that. It's the script Howard the Duck. Oh dear. <laughs> oh my. Oh, I love my D Of course you do, Morgan. The only thing I could say to that is that's a script. That's a script, man. No, that's a revised draft. Oh this... no, you took it out of the plastic. It's, it's not, not working anymore. It's not Put it back in. It's... I don't believe that's Howard the Duck. There's too many words in there. <laughs> that implies description. I don't buy that. And then we got James Sullivan, also known as Hymitude. Okay, tonight's broadcast is brought to you by Avalon Natalie Gogli, my new niece, who's a cute little fuzzy thingy. Yes, she is. She's a oh, cute she little is. fuzzy oh, thingy. She's so cute. Your babies come out fuzzy. Uh, well, she's got it. She's got her baby fuzz on, you know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't check on newborn babies if they have fuzz. I newborn do. babies have 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 pores with with hairs that stick out, you know. I check on newborn babies every night. She's so cute. Maybe. Last but not least, another Canadian of ours, Jada Jada. Never leaves, Mike. Never leaves. Although I don't have any scripts with me, I do have, and I wonder if you can see them. You won't. There's no video. Oh, 
Jeez. Oh, they're pops. They're pops, Morgan. They're my Adventures Age of Ultron pops that I bought on free Costco today because they were out of good comics. Got Captain America and Thor. And I don't have any. I don't and... have any Star Wars. I don't have any. Uh, There's your Tony. Marvel stuff. But... I got I got a Loki here too for the first movie. I had to bring Where's... him along because. I, Where's there Tony? There were no Tonys. Of course, the Tonys were sold out. And there oh. were no Black Widows because they didn't make a Black Widow. What about Thor's Oh, Hipside? that's a shame. I can't keep favoring my Thor pop over my Loki pop or else my Loki pop will try to overthrow me. So, he's here too. Oh, oh Jada. I have, no, uh, I have no comic book stuff, which is why I'm wearing Chewbacca to, uh, to show my nerdiness. Uh, Star definitely... Wars had a Marvel run, so it kind of spoke. Technically, I have a comic with me. It's this 1970 Donald Duck comic from Gold Key. It's like, I have to keep it in here, or else, like, I'm, I'd be too scared to, for it to disintegrate. A nice fan sent it to me. I'm, I'm happy for that. My mom's action figure, Clark Kent, from Smallville. See, he's wearing the little jacket. When does this turn into a show and tell episode? Because it's of this moment. It's always tell episodes, like, because we have things to show. Hey, every so, episode is because... Every, I, I got scissors. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't have any comic books except for these. <laughs> Sonic. <laughs> Universe. Uh, boy. <laughs> oh boy. So, uh, of course, this is Marvel vs. DC. I'm bringing the comic book expert himself, uh, Louis Lovehog, a.k.a. Linkara. We got him, guys. We got him. What? You did? Oh, I'm leaving. <laughs> what? Don't leave. <laughs> Welcome to a top the fourth wall where bad comics burn. Linkar's gonna teach you all a lesson you might learn. Linkar. I know that's not the chords, but. I uh, say, I, I, I guess the theme song, but in a minor chord. <laughs> Everybody's trying to yeah. I'm not trying to impress you. It makes the whole, makes, makes the song creepy suddenly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Sorry. You can use that. it for the next Silent Hill episode, if ever. <laughs> you look how everybody's just trying to impress you. Trying to suck up and stuff. I am beyond that. You're not even half as cool as Last Angry Geek. Oh, snap. Oh, snap. Oh. Oh. <laughs> See, the sad thing is... Disclaimer. Disclaimer, we love Brian as much as Lewis. Especially me. No. You should Don't because 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 he is because he's better than me, so yeah. Exactly. Oh. Exactly. So therefore your love level should be higher on, on the Brian Hines scale. What's a Brian Hines scale? You can I'll remember. Oh, God. I'll remember well his remember. awesomeness is, is you know so Contained, it requires it though. Look, shut up, you ruined the bit! <laughs> Don't worry, I'll remember to tweet him, like, of his awesomeness. I'll just give him a little shout out, like, hi! <laughs> so, uh, these two companies, Marvel vs. DC, here, um, I mean, Marvel is the second of the two companies. DC came out first, and They've been producing comics, you know, that spun off into TV, movies, video games, all that stuff. We're going to talk about it tonight. And, of course, you guys got to question me about what we're going to talk about here anyways, but I'll explain it as you ask me those questions. Yeah. Um, so, otherwise, uh, yeah, let's get into Marvel vs. DC. So, are we, like, um, are we, like, talking about DC and Marvel, like, as a whole? Like as superhero directions and concepts, or are we just going through the medium? We're just we're going through the mediums. We're going through comics, video games, uh, TV, and movies, basically, in general. But there's so many. Well, I, yeah. So isn't that the point, though? Yeah, honestly, I was about to ask you, Mike, if like if this debate would be if just Marvel versus DC today, or like Marvel versus DC in general, because like. That's a huge, like, those are two completely different arguments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. especially with today, where I would argue that today Marvel is still kicking their asses. Mm. Yeah. Right. Old 
DC, I would give all the points to them, but I don't, but they're not old DC, they're, 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 well, I want to say New 52, except they finally dropped the New 52 label from comics after, like, three, four years. Mm. Would you say, like, uh. middle-aged? Maybe? They're not in their teen phase, because that was the 90s. No, they're still in their teen phase. Be well, especially in the movie department, they're in their teen phase because right now in the movie department, DC is jumping up and down going, Look at how serious I am! Take me seriously! We're so mature! <laughs> yeah, see, I'm gonna... Uh, DC is embarrassed. That's the thing about, about, about DC, especially in the last several years. It feels like they're embarrassed to be doing superhero stuff. It's like, they, it's like they've, you know hit that awkward uh, 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 maturity in their teenage phase and they're and they're going through like Ugh, these guys all wear spandex and they all have bright colors and it's so childish it's so immature and of course you know the more they try the more they try to argue how about how mature they are the more they they come across as immature you know what I think it is I think it's the fact that because comic culture and nerd culture has become more and more mainstream there's pressure on the DC and Marvel companies to make their work available to a more mainstream audience, and because DC is, like, full of old people, they don't understand what that means. Mm. So I they just that. try and be like, uh, mainstream people like dark stuff and action they like movies. They like Batman. serious, <laughs> heavy dramas, and Marvel, you know, being younger and a little more free-spirited just makes their comics more widely known. Well, I think on top well, of that... Is, I, I, is uh... Is uh, is Stanley young? Okay, no. Stanley isn't in charge of Stanley's Marvel. Stanley's on life Stanley doesn't, Stanley doesn't do like anything at Marvel. <laughs> right. He doesn't have a say in anything. He's a spokesperson. Exactly. Stanley yeah. is just there. Like even in movies, he's there. It's kind of a fun, That's part kind of, of it. Funky yeah, twist, see, I'm... isn't it? It's kind of a funky twist how the old white guys like the spokesperson, whereas the younger, prettier people are like working behind the scenes. It's like in reverse. I wonder they're doing so well. Yeah, see, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna take the, I'm gonna take the, uh, the very uh, difficult argument here because I, I could say I could just as easily jump on the Marvel bandwagon as, as well as the rest of you guys, but I'm actually gonna take, I'm actually gonna try and argue the point that. Marvel, may, in terms of films, may not necessarily be better. It's just in some ways, they do try harder. Huh. They act more like comic books. But they do have other problems. Because they don't act as much like movies. And because they're pro, that can sometimes hurt them. Uh, it's, it's pretty much that Marvel nowadays, they just found their voice. Right. The thing is that the whole Marvel... like ju Not just the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but just... Marvel making movies in general, mm -hmm. it pretty much jumped big in the early 2000s. Back during the 90s and stuff like that, it was pretty much Superman and Batman dominating the whole, like, superhero movies, because that's what they did. Marvel made a few movies here and there, but they're not as well known as either, like, Superman or Batman during that time. It wasn't until the uh, Spider-Man and X-Men came in in the early 2000s when, like, now Marvel just really opened the doors to uh to in the world of movies and then it wasn't until like when did like things didn't really jump for marvel until maybe i could be wrong back when disney bought marvel and then like the marvel cinematic universe came in and that's like when things really start to fully bloom and everything starts to connect to get together marvel was certainly around in film before disney bought it but disney definitely did change everything Mm -hmm. well, part of the problem was that, uh, well, yeah, Spider-Man and uh, uh, the X-Men movies and Blade uh, helped, you know, get more Marvel properties out into the onto the silver screen and get more mainstream attention. The problem um, from Marvel's perspective was they weren't seeing a dime from that. They were they had you know gotten the initial money from like the licensing, but I don't think they really got much in terms of royalty money from the film. So you have these you know big blockbuster successes, especially the Spider-Man films. Uh, uh, which bring in so much money, and of course Marvel's just like, well, we're not getting any benefit uh, uh, from this other than, you know, name recognizable value. And while there is sometimes a spike in comic sales when, uh, uh, when you know, movies for properties come out, it's really not that huge uh, enough of a number. So, 
so from their perspective, making their own studio and producing their own films kind of made sense for them uh, from a business standpoint. Yeah. Um, there I you go, a then. I actually have a question. Uh, I just realized this. When, like, when the movies come out, do the comics start to feel like... A, as Do they start to take the role of merchandising for the movie or like the oh movie? god yes like oh my god yes okay just from marvel alone when spider-man 3 came out spider-man in the comics for ab for no really discernible reason decided to wear his black costume again mm. oh. they just it was it there was no really good reason for him to do so he I mean i mean they were they tried to justify it with like he was going darker or something like that but it's really just he decided to change clothes but he was already on the run from the law in the middle of another storyline of course there's of course there's been the massive influx of guardians of the galaxy comics lately with the yep, guardians of the, the galaxy or... started uh, guest starring and a bunch of other stuff including captain marvel uh and we had uh, 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 you know, the, a relaunch of the Guardians of the Galaxy book with all the recognizable characters from the film. Uh, otherwise, Guardians of the Galaxy has had a lot of rotating uh, uh, membership around for, over the last several years. Mm. And right now, there's there's rumors that uh, because Fox wouldn't play ball with the Fantastic Four and license you know the movie rights back to to uh, Marvel like Sony did with Spider-Man, that they've canceled the Fantastic Four comic basically out of spite. Really. Mm -hmm. Doesn't seem like the well, best kind business of a... move. Yeah, but but from their perspective, well, why should we be, we be promote? Th th from their perspective, it's why should we be helping promote their product that we're not going to get any benefit from, and they weren't willing to cut a deal with us. Mm. I know I don't necessarily <laughs> think it's all that sound from a business or PR perspective, but that's probably how they see it. Yeah, I think from my like own admittedly. Sorry, Morgan, uh, go you ahead. go on, Morgan. No, 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 please do ignore the guy that keeps getting interrupted when he try to, tries to make a point. Uh, no. Okay, like, you weren't okay. interrupted for uh, like five minutes in the past hour, so yeah. don't even, Morgan, okay? We're not scripted. My... I know, I know. From my, from my own personal point of view, the way I see it is that you have two different um, platforms that are treating their superheroes in two different ways. You have Marvel that's taking these very basic concepts and saying, let's just fly with them. We have a billionaire that has like these war machines and he has like an iron suit and stuff like that. Boom, Iron Man, we have this Norse god, we have this Norse, uh, Norse god with daddy issue or with family issues. Boom, Thor, a group of villains that are galactic and stuff, and one of them's a tree. Boom, Guardians of the Galaxy. It just seems like they're so simple, and yet they're so easy to connect. Or else with, you know, DC, it seems like they have a simple concept, but they keep building and building and building and building on it. Uh, a good example would be Superman. For the longest time when I was a kid... I didn't know about the whole alien origin. I watched the Max Fleischer cartoons. I sadly saw Superman for to agree. Um, it wouldn't be until my teenage years I saw the first film. And while I thought it was a good movie, I just kept thinking to myself, there's just so much that they're cramming in that it makes you wonder at the time just how much information they had to get across for a mainstream audience. We have the origin of Superman, his times on Earth, the Lex Luthor case. With all that material, it's really hard to fit into a, a, a regular two-hour feature film, and even at two and a half hours, it still feels marvelously sluggish. Marvelous in the nice visuals, but yet sluggish in pace, because you have so many acts to set up this one character. If you just simply remove the alien origin and just had him flying around Metropolis, mm. that would pretty much be the whole movie in a nutshell. Because without that basic complex setup, that, that's the whole thing with DC. They're very complex. It's like we can't have, you know, this whole film here without the complex origin story. Tim Burton did it with Batman. He just had Batman trying to fight against Gotham and his um, status as being a positive vigilante, his ties in with the Joker. We didn't need that whole origin stuff until later at the tail end with that big twist there. Spoiler alert with Jack Nicholson being the killer. So you can do that angle. 
you can really do, but it seems like today it's like we just can't have this mainstream story without connecting to everybody. It's a bizarre thing with Superman in particular. They've redone Superman's origin in the comics like four or five times. It's the same origin story, but they decide, but they keep feeling the need to have someone else write it, and so it's the same overall plot, but the, but the it's like the little details keep changing, and it's kind of irritating in that regard. I can only imagine. And speaking on rewrites, a uh, real qu little uh, quickie question. This will probably be brought up later. The actual version Superman or Richard Donner cut Superman? I still haven't seen the Richard Donner cut. Oh! I saw the Richard oh. Donner cut. <laughs> You're killing me! Uh, oh my goodness. Oh, we have... We have yeah, a screening to do with this yeah. man. Uh, honestly, it wasn't that great. <laughs> no? They made some changes to make some of it like better, like more serious. They expanded on Lois Lane's role. But then they, they made some changes that kind of like did very little. What? I didn't like how they changed they... some of God's line reads. I thought the other ones were better. And the Mar ending. The Mar ending was fucking Mar dumb. Mar Lando is Kyle at jor -El. Why can't fucking Lara get to do some exposition? Why does Jarrell gotta do everything, huh? Isn't Lara special? The father becomes other... the son, and the son becomes the father. It was never the mother becomes the son, the son becomes the mother, because then that yeah, just that, be that, that, that whole son becomes the father thing doesn't make any damn sense to me, but whatever. That's because conflict culture hates moms. I was talking about yeah. this with my dad just last week. None, nobody has any moms. Their moms either die or don't exist. Oh, Does right. Tony Stark have a mom? We don't fucking know. She's never mentioned. Bruce Wayne's parents die. He mostly talks about his dad. Same with Superman with both of his parents. Did he? I, wrong. I thought he was moping uh, over both parents. Spider-Man's parents in the movies, what does he talk about? Oh, my dad was doing science stuff. What was my mom doing? Who cares? She's dead. Fuck moms. They were both spies. Uh, I, might, I might argue that actually uh, Uncle Ben being a, a surrogate parent is the one that was uh, the one that dies. So that's where the uh, that's where the uh, the formulas bent just a little bit. But with Spider-Man, there's also the stuff with his parents, especially in the newer movies. Uh, and the, the newer primary movies. focus is his uh, Oh, the newer movies. Do the newer that's, movies count? Uh, that yes, was Sony's count. way. It's better than those movies. What? You heard me. They have problems, sure, but the Raimi movies have so much more. I like, don't know. To, to well, me, let's just say there's a reason why Andrew Garfield is fired, so... <laughs> to, to, to me, to me, the new Spider-Mans are sort of the way of saying, we're gonna do a new version, forget about this version, we're gonna pave the way here, but it's so rushed, and yes, I'm going to admit, the Raimi films have problems, I'm not gonna say they're my favorite superhero movies, oh, but... Are. With so much, again, with so much material, there has to be at least a certain pace and weight to it. You can argue that James Franco's Harry, o yeah, Harry Osborn, Harry Osborn, at least has a character arc, regardless of how terrible Superman Three is. At least there's a reason why he's going out for revenge. Or else, in the Amazing Spider-Man Two, it's like, oh hey, here's this character from the comics. Let's introduce him while we have the chance. And going to this okay, okay, bigger okay. franchise that just I think the Amazing happen. movies mostly exist exist because Sony wanted to keep the license. <laughs> Here's the same. Thank you, Lewis. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. yeah. And now they're going to try and do it again with Lord and Miller. Just, well, it can't be as bad as Roger Corman's Fantastic Four. I don't know. I think it's the best Fantastic... Uh, Roger Corman Fantastic Four movie is the best of the Fantastic Four movies. Can I just say... Oh, thank you, Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Jada, you said something. On or what? Sorry, Jada, go on. Go on. Sorry. Okay. Here's the thing. First of all, two things. One... Maybe it's a personal bias, but I really don't care how well a James Franco character is written. He's still a James Franco character, and I'm not going to like him better than any other actor on the planet. I cannot stand James Franco. He does not give a shit in his performance. He's probably high all the time. He's not the right fit for Harry Osborn. He's too old, first of all. They're all too old. Whatever. Second. Oh, wait, I'm not done. But the, the new guy, his his motivation was kind of rushed, but at least he acted it well. Of course, not on the when he became the... the he, he, he at least kind of talked to the smug, rich guy thing. 
dad. You know, you got that from his personality. James Franco had none of that. Oh sure. Oh sure. His new guy was blood has magical powers now. The new guy was Evil Ed on a hoverboard. From Fright Night. The ability of the character and performance is more important to me than how in depth they go with the motivation. Second, especially for villains. Second, I'm not. I I don't necessarily like the idea of rebooting a superhero movie like a few years after the last one. Like Hulk did it, but Hulk was very clever that nobody noticed. I did. No, but I think, but the Hulk, I actually just saw a quote from Stan Lee himself saying what is the problem with uh, the two recent Hulk movies of uh, the 2000s, and it's mostly the factor that they overplayed the Hulk. Like, there's a reason why um, the Lou Ferrigno Hulk is much more remembered than, like, the recent Hulk is because the movies, they pretty much overplayed with his size. They made him a little too huge, like a, like a gargantuan titan or something like that, where... Lou Ferrigno is just like, he's just this ink, like he just becomes a little bit bigger and more muscular. So like, that's the, the thing. In the the size of Edward Norton's Hulk, it's not like he's just a green guy walking around in the Marvel comics. Even then, the Ang Lee Hulk, it just feels like he was trying to do more of an artistic, haiku-ish kind of version of the superhero character. And looking back at it now, it just seemed weird. It, it seems like more was an artistic interpretation of a superhero movie, and it didn't work because I think at that point we were trying to get a more mainstream, traditional superhero telling kind of film that we got with The Incredible Hulk. But I can't really put my finger on exactly why that was so half and half on my case. I mean, I don't hate both films. They're just underwhelming, in my opinion. I really mm. don't like the Ang Lee film. I oh, see, it, this... it, it, it was silly. It was they very silly. So oh, cute. Oh, yeah. It's like King Kong huge. He was never that big in the comics. Yeah. And see, like this is why... Hungry. With like the bright purple pants. It, it was silly. But see, this is why I say... This is why I say that... Um, that Marvel isn't necessarily better. They just try harder. If you look at... Um, you know, if, if you look at the, the, the Marvel... Uh, the Marvel playlist of films, you can you can find a a, a bunch of them that just sort of uh, either came and went, and nobody and nobody noticed, nobody uh, nobody really remembered them that well. Electra, Swamp, th Swamp Thing, no, oh, sorry, wrong spot. Um, although I although I admit I, I did go to see I did go to see Electra in the theater. I wanted to see a Daredevil follow up. Uh, Daredevil. Again, maybe I was among the few that liked that, but I can't, I it's can't, uh, I think ignore. you're among the ones that like that. I'm among the, among the very, very few. It's guilty. It's very <laughs> guilty. You actually um, like that? Liar! Liar! I have to. Um, and what's this man thing? Uh, I've never even heard Steve of that. Steve so Gerber created it. It's pretty much somewhat like Swamp Thing, but different. And said this, it's this big hulking beast that's hairy and this weird face, or whatever. Uh, he met it with Howard the Duck a couple of times. Giant hmm. sized man thing. But you guys every think... every Punisher movie ever made. Mm -hmm. uh, well, you're talking about like the early Marvel stuff. Right. E ever since, ever yeah, since no, no, the no. MCU started, none of the movies have gone unnoticed. Mm -hmm. Like everybody's seen all of them. No, Even the Hulk. It, Everybody's seen well, it. Well, if we're if we're talking about if we're if we're going to be talking about Spider Man, uh, we we have to we have to take the Punisher into into account yeah. too because exactly. that's from the same era, and and yeah. Blade the Blade movies Blade mm -hmm. Trinity, Blade Trinity. Who, who owns Blade? Oh, yeah. I think um, Sony does, but I have to double check. Well, well, well. The oh, big news for Marvel is Sony. that they. Marvel's got the rights to the Punisher, Blade, and Ghost Rider now. I can, I, I can I, see I, how they can work with Ghost Rider. I don't know how they're going to interpret with the other two. I would dig because... a Blade reboot. I'm not going to lie. I like the Nick Cage Ghost Rider. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, are you kidding me? I love him too. I, I like them. Yeah. They're, they're not so 
It's Nick Cage going crazy. How can you not like? How can you not be angry at that? It's actually a better origin story than the than the comic one. Oh, you want to yeah, know what the comic yeah. origin of Ghost Rider is? Fire hmm. away. Shoot. Basically, basically, his mom in 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 her death throes made him promise her to never uh, uh, ride in a stunt motorcycle show ever again. He agreed to do so to his dying mom, and. <laughs> And wouldn't explain that to anyone, so his dad went off on the stunt motorcycle uh, 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 show instead and got seriously injured. Then he, then he, in a fit of rage, then did the motorcycle stunt show, and then for some reason summoned Satan to give him power, to give him motorcycle riding power. And <laughs> yeah, he just suddenly sa summons Satan. It just happens. Then his girlfriend comes in and and makes Satan go away. <laughs> It's that like, simple and stupid. Is the, All right, I need I some extra I can, help right here. Yo, Satan, can you give me some power? Pretty I guess, much, I, can yeah. under, I, I guess I can understand if the mom is like the Virgin Mary for like that kind of contrast, but like, really? He just like, he, he's just like, oh look, a boy broke his mom's promise. Fuck! It just goes to show you some things won't work in translation, so... Something has yeah. to give once in a while. Yeah, so the Ghost Rider origin in the movie makes a hell of a lot more sense. It's simple, yes, and it's the kind of Faustian bargain you'd see a mile away, but it works. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And meanwhile, let's look at let's look at a few of the of the DC films that also that uh, that also count in this uh, in this realm. We're talking uh, not necessarily super superhero films, but they've also got. Films like *Road to Perdition*, *A History of Violence*, and uh, not uh, these are all DC imprints, and I didn't really see Where them. Go, yeah. But um, but last I checked, they were very well they were very well received. And then you got movies like *Stardust*, which really. Isn't that uh, the one with Brendan Fraser and it's all fantasy like and stuff like no, that? No, no, no. That's one with Dustin Hoffman. He's a pirate and there's this fairy that's trying to grant a wish and these witches try to go after the fairy just to gain immortality or something. You're mixing up Hook with Inkheart there. I no, don't not... know what you're. What? No, no, no. That is the plot to Stardust. A bunch of witches are trying to capture this falling star and the falling star is like, I gotta grant someone's wish and they meet in the Dustin Hoffman and Dustin Hoffman, I guess, is this pirate or something. Not Hook, pirate, a different one. That, that's all I remember. De Niro. It was De Niro. Do! 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 I'm losing it. De Niro as Hook? I gotta check that out. <laughs> It, it was. I, I just got this vibe from the movie that it was trying to be. It it was. It was trying to be the Princess Bride, but just did not. Uh, it so close, but no cigar. Hook is my favorite DC superhero movie. <laughs> <laughs> we that love you already. Can we, can we keep him? Uh, I don't think so. And I, I just recently saw I just recently saw the losers with uh, with Mike uh, here. Um, yeah, we did some research on it. Uh, it was it was a, a DC comic movie that came and went, but it was actually kind of decent. I mean, I, I can't. Huh? Yeah. So so are they? Yeah, I got Chris Evans so are they necessarily losing? The, the fight if there is a fight here no I don't I, no, no, no. I don't think so in the long no. run I agree I hope it's fair so, to say that red and red 2 are huge guilty pleasures because of John Malkovich is in his prime mm -hmm. and and give us that Wonder Woman movie please no don't, well, work. don't make a Wonder Woman movie until Zack Snyder's dead oh, okay. oh. <laughs> well whoa. Well. <laughs> Oh, they, they will have Zack Snyder direct it because they, they just got a they, new person. They had. They had uh, did, did they announce they who the new person was? Because they, because I know yeah. the one, the one woman, uh, uh, quit or was either was fired or was quit. I can't remember which. I think it was quitting for creative differences. Mm -hmm. I, no, no, no. It's a, it's a woman. They got a new woman to direct it. That I remember. I just don't remember which one. Uh, you were saying, oh, Patty Jenkins. 
Patty Jen yeah. Patty Jenkins, the director of Monster, the 2003 you, film. You were saying, Jada? I think it's a good Wonder Woman movie. I think Monster. <laughs> we need a Wonder Woman movie like that. Doesn't that... Wait, actually, that already exists. That's the one with Megan Fox. It's not Megan Fox. I, think. I don't know what you're referring that, to. That's a hoax. That's a hoax. No? That's oh, it's it's a 2008 thing? Or... Don't yeah. you mean the pilot? Yeah, the the pilot. L Lewis, you Megan Fox you wasn't the wasn't the wasn't the actress in that, and that pilot no. was horrible. Do you think all bland yeah, that... brunette women look alike, Matt? Oh my God, oh. Matt! <laughs> it's not Megan Fox, you goof. Oh, Same. okay. <laughs> I might have made a mistake. It's been a while since I've heard about it, so like. Pants be darken. Pants be darken. How many people did I anger? At least in this, in this room. All yeah, of them. them. Quite oh, frankly, crap. Megan probably had better things to do. Yeah. She, probably mm. she must have been too Not busy with the Transformers it. movie. Yeah, tell her. Yeah. She was... Better things to do. I support that choice. So, like, but I guess if I can... I can initiate a change, like... I guess for TV shows, like, that could be... Another realm, a, an entirely different ballpark, especially right now, how DC is pretty much dominating it. Yeah, like, oh, yeah. Marvel has, like, Agent Carter and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., but then and we got... Daredevil on Netflix. Yeah. Oh, yeah! Daredevil that... on Netflix, which is Daredevil apparently part of the Marvel Netflix. Cinematic Daredevil, Universe. Yeah. Okay, well, Marvel is picking up the slack, but, like, now, like, DC does have, like, stuff like um, uh, Gotham, The Flash, Green Arrow, and and all that kind of stuff. They're pretty much bringing their their movies, what like what they're doing with their movies and like trying to put it in their TV shows and stuff like that. So they're pretty much like they're Gotham, they're spreading their um First of all, first of all, I'll give Gotham another year before it tanks. Seriously. Gotham Nobody's confused watching me. it. Nobody even likes it. It's just the thing that insists on existing. Yeah, Gotham confuses me. Why is it so hard for us to... Why couldn't we just have a Batman series? Ah. Why did we need to have the, the Batman prequel? Especially considering you know... Especially because the entire premise of the show is based around the fact that, the, that your heroes, your main characters, will fail because their mission to save Gotham, you know, it's like James Gordon and Bullock, right? Uh, their mission will fail because Batman has to come around at some point. Mm -hmm. I used to wonder who Fish is supposed to be. I'm still trying to pinpoint that one. She's an original yeah, character. Yeah, but won't that take, like, a while? I mean, it's not like the series finale. They're going to bring the little kid dressed up like Batman. You know what? That I wouldn't put hurt. it past them. They're already introducing a fucking Batcave, <laughs> and they've almost gotten the entire no known rogues gallery. Like, seriously, they're just yeah, rushing apparently... into every oh. reference they can make before Batman even grows up. It's ridiculous. They're writing... Get it? Get it? This person's a super villain. Get it? <laughs> the other thing to consider is that even eons ago, the idea of doing a superhero TV show was slowly in its prime. We had um, Superman, of course, in the 1950s, Batman making a huge splash in color TV, Marvel jumping on the bandwagon with a bunch of TV pilots, which sadly went nowhere. The only ones but... I can think of that, the only ones I can think of that really did something was the amazing spider-man and of course the incredible hulk mm -hmm. uh, uh, i wouldn't say the amazing spider-man went anywhere considering it was like what only a few episodes and it was no terrible. no it, it ran it ran for two seasons and the only reason why they canceled was because of budget the very last episode cost them a whole lot because it was set in hong kong or china one of the two regions but even then cbs was picking up these pirate pilots are like you know what? We have to change our name to the superhero station at some point. No way we're gonna do this. Click. There was Wonder Woman. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, Wonder that was Woman. A massive phenomenon. Yep. And the Carter baby. Yeah, mm -hmm. don't forget. There's also the Justice League. I mean, Hanna Barbera like made oh, a serious impact sure. with plenty of different cartoons. Uh, cartoons. Uh, cartoons are different. Yeah. Thought... Super Friends. Yes. Yeah, the animated Super Friends. Like, there are definitely <laughs> plenty of different versions. Crypt of the Super Dog. Uh, I watched that, We actually. have Super Friends to thank for the fact that nobody respects Aquaman. <laughs> oh, that's right. Okay, look. Everybody's so why... name is Super Friends. Not just Aquaman. 
Superman was lame in Super Friends. Batman was lame in Super Friends. The Wonder Twins were lame in Super Friends. The Wonder Twins were Super part Friends. of Super Friends. Oh yeah, Friends? everyone was lame. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't, I don't disagree with you there, considering you know just how, especially especially when you look back and now and how laughable it was. But Aquaman suffered the most because he has a, he any they haven't really he still hasn't recovered in pop culture. Batman and Superman have recovered. Wonder Woman has recovered. Aquaman never did. <laughs> the only time we came close to recovering Aquaman was that was when they wanted to do an Aquaman uh, uh, Smallville TV type show, show and oh, that pilot right. was terrible. <laughs> it really, you didn't you didn't like that. Uh... Uh, what's that actor's name? Don from the Dawn of the Dead, mm -hmm. the remake. The it wasn't that it was terrible. It's that it was it was just it's Smallville but with Aquaman. So it's just there's not it's not even like it can't even rely on really shoehorned in references because nobody knows anything about Aquaman. Mm -hmm. So you know. Yeah, funny enough, just today I just saw your episode about the comic book quickies where you explained about Aquaman. Um, pretty much like what he can do and pretty much how it's actually a good thing it's like oh he talks to fish <laughs> yeah but he can also talk to sharks that can pretty much eat you whole so like he can summon giant sea creatures from both from you know there are lots of sea creatures you know miles down and under the water which we can't even you know get a good look at because they can only survive in those high pressure zones usually so yeah well wouldn't that mean that Aquaman can't wouldn't that mean that Aquaman can't take them out of those high pressure zones Oh, I mean, I mean the other way around. Actually, that well, we can't go into them. Sorry, he, but he could summon them up because they could survive in a lower pressure environment. But uh, but the bigger issue also is that dude lives at the bottom of the ocean. He has, which is high pressure. He's able to come out on land just as easily. Super strength, super speed. Uh, he, he's amphibious, basically, and he can, he can also talk in the water too, for that matter. Yeah, if we try to go down there, we have to wear those. Uh, we have to wear those suits from. Uh, uh, the abyss, you know, with the with the pink goo inside of it. Uh, I, I guess, like, the Justice League shows, they didn't give Aquaman his full potential. They didn't give him enough episodes where there are situations in the, like, there are trouble brewing in the bottom of the, in, like, the bottom of the sea or something. Aquaman's superpower and super friends was he owned a jet ski. <laughs> <laughs> and he talked to fish. That's a lot of fish. Pretty much, it's it's only it's only when we get to uh, uh, the DC animated universe, uh, the the Timverse is where you actually started getting respect for Aquaman. And personally, I always preferred him better. I I actually liked his '90s look with the big scruffy beard and the hook hand. I always liked oh, that, that yeah. better myself. He wasn't like a major character in the DC animated universe, though. He wasn't so, a like, major he character, but he made multiple appearances and he kicked ass. Yeah, he did. I definitely like his interpretation. I'm just saying. People that watch the show will look at him and think he's cool, but they won't really like go home remembering it. They'll I guess be a like, lot of man, that Batman. Yeah, and honestly, that like God. that 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 does seem like a cool one. But even at that, I think people don't really give that much respect. And for that one, I blame John Tron because he did that episode what? of Aquaman for the Nintendo GameCube and pretty much made fun of Aquaman and the fact that he has a hook hand. It's like, what? I don't remember him having a hook hand. I don't think the entirety of comic books. You blame John Tron for Aquaman's failure? Aquaman. Well, like, for because his, John for the Tron, news version. Yeah. Well, we talked about Aquaman at least, but what other characters from Marvel and DC you want to talk about? I mean, you talk about Batman, Superman, Iron Man, and like, how do they re resonate with us as characters and superheroes? Well, the thing, the thing is, there's a distinct... I've, I've talked about this before on my show. Basically, DC and Marvel have two very different philosophies, or at least they used to have two different philosophies with how they approach their heroes. The DC universe uh, is populated by superheroes whom you admire. They're the ones you look up to. They're the ones you want to be more like. Uh, they are the paragons. You know, Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman. They, they encourage us to better ourselves and to be better. Marvel, on the other hand, has the characters who are relatable. They are us if we are in the superhero role. They face everyday problems very, with, with uh, varying degrees of uh, success or failure. They are the ones who have to deal with the everyday problems of life. And neither approach is better or worse than the other. It just comes down to personal preference. That pretty much explains a theory I always had, where I always view DC as painting their superheroes as these Greek gods, these muscular beings that sort of just fly down and save people. 
Marvel, on the other hand, you know, as you put it, they're just relatable. They have human problems like we do. I remember, again, this is, I'm not going to go too in-depth here. When I was recommending Guardians of the Galaxy to a mm-hmm. friend of mine, I just simply oh, said yeah. it's a live-action version of Futurama because these are people that have common problems. You have someone with anger issues, someone that has, you know, a taste for nostalgia, but at the same time, the loss of a family member and stuff like that. And it's just so interesting to see them take these people with superhuman abilities, and yet they all have human flaws. I just find that a tad more interesting. But even then, what really bugs me is how both companies, while Marvel is really showcasing a lot of their characters, and yet DC's like, we have Batman, we have Superman. Swamp well, Thing. Um, my my you problem have Green is that, now, that bond. there's still sorry. I'm 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 getting somewhere with this. There's some characters they're not digging up enough. Like again, DC has a lot of opportunities, but it just seems like they're not playing their cards that well. Aside from their big franchises, while Marvel has a good head, I feel like there's a couple that they're not really showcasing that much. Point in case, the Submariner. Submariner, one of the very Submariner early is ba- is uh, is basically the DC equivalent of Aquaman. Uh, he's ruler of Atlantis. Uh, he's technically oh. the first superhero in the Marvel universe altogether. Uh, and and he's a mutant. He has limited flight. He is he's badass. He wears a speedo all the time. The closest mm-hmm. thing they did was the the Does 60s. He wear a suit of bacon. <laughs> the closest huh. they did was a '60s cartoon which was part of this syndicate package, and that was about it. I heard they tried making a live-action series, but that didn't go anywhere because they didn't do the water, the underwater footage right, and the closest they got was the man from Atlantis, which I only heard about. But it just seems like with the technology today, technology today you can do some amazing things with these kind of characters. And I feel that if they really dig up on the more obscure and bring them into a new generation, they can do that. And they did that with the Submariner once. They made him disappear for once, then he appeared in the Fantastic Four, I believe, with this long beard. And then he had you know, Johnny I'm... Storm going, wait a minute, he seems familiar. You know, I think, the, I think the one thing about the DC movie, well, about the DC characters is that I think DC doesn't put enough, like, love or respect to any of the other ones other than Superman or Batman. Because when you do think about it, the most memorable DC movies are pretty much Superman, Batman, and what else? Like, that's pretty much it. Like, they try, like, there are moments when they tried, like, the Green Lantern, but they're really, they, they didn't put in love or effort. They See, know I very like well the Green that. Lantern film, so, so I, I don't get what people's problem is with it, but I, but that's just me. I didn't, I mean, I didn't dislike it either, I'm just, I'm just noticing, I was just noting that it bombed. Well, I don't I, think it's, I don't mm-hmm. think it's the worst movie per se. There were just some things I was confused about the character. He has a magic ring and it shoots out these weird gadgets it's or something like that. energy construct. Why is that difficult? It's not even a magic ring. It's technology. <laughs> yeah, it, it's like they try... Like, the th- what I'm trying to say it's... is that they know very well, like, Batman and Superman are pretty much the most popular ones ever. So they know... They're, they're putting pretty much their money on, like... They put so much effort onto marketing and big stuff. That's why you would see like something in San Diego Comic Con, like the most hyped up thing would be so, like the Superman versus Batman films, and like, like when I said the Green Lantern, I'm not saying it because like well it's bad. It's because like, they, like the marketers and like the movie people, they just didn't really care. They didn't put in enough effort to make people like the Green Lantern or stuff like that, the next big, like, the next Batman or Superman. Well, there were two mm-hmm. other problems with it as well that, that come to mind with with the film that would probably contribute to it bombing. Uh, one was, one was Parallax. Uh, the thing is, Parallax is the, not the, I actually like Parallax as a villain, the problem being, you introduce this very high concept kind of a thing right out of the starting gate, and he's you know, it's supposed to be so huge and powerful and whatnot. You save it. You save him for the third movie. You save that for the big final boss thing. You don't have him be the first thing that Hal Jordan takes out. Like this is the first ever Green Lantern movie, right? And it's like yeah. the story of his origin. When you're making the first superhero movie and you're introducing it to the masses, you want to go over the bases. You want to use the arch nemesis villain. Hmm. And yet, fucking Sinestro, who should have been the bad guy, 
it's just off to the side of some reference for the people who know who he is. Yeah. Which is not mm. a lot of them because it's the first ever Green Lantern movie. And I wouldn't even I wouldn't even minded with uh, Sinestro being saved for the second movie so they could establish the friendship with Hal first. But but why not like Hector Hammond as the main villain? You could I mean he's. Oh, he already, he already has a somewhat sympathetic storyline going throughout uh, out the thing. You could not necessarily make him a Loki, but, you know, come pretty close with that, and it would really work. The second problem that I felt they had with it, it should not have been Hal Jordan. Uh, I know Hal Jordan is technically the first space cop Green Lantern, but pop culture by this point had accepted that Jon Stewart was the one that people knew about because of the Justice League cartoon. He was the. I, I've heard from several people who were confused, who you know don't read comic books, because like, why the hell is Green Lantern a white guy? I remember him being a black guy. How it's like Bruce Banner and movie. David Banner. Yeah. Mm. I have. Green Hulk and Green Gold. The Sinestro thing go. really bugged me. I can't think of a single other superhero movie that didn't start mm. out with the arch nemesis, Batman. And it, Batman it begins. Okay, but there were already Batman movies that were well known. Yeah, fair enough in that regard then. It's the same thing with Spider Man. Uh, Amazing Spider Man had the lizard, but Spider Man Spider Man had Green Goblin. Superman I think this one started with the Nemesis. What is that? Anime. Batman Mask of the Phantasm doesn't count. I'm talking about the first Batman, Tim Burton's Batman, was like many people's introduction to Batman as the Batman that we all know. Both Mask of the Phantasm still had the Joker in it. Mm. Yeah, yeah, so... Yeah, Can't be too careful of those weirdos running around. <laughs> it's, a very was... under... it's a very underrated Batman movie. Even the lesser known right? ones. I Hulk don't Stark know. had Obadiah Stane. Hulk had Abomination. Captain America had... Well... Red it's a specific... Iron... Well, Iron Man is different here because Obadiah Stane is not his primary villain. Who is then? I always thought it was... Mandarin. Uh, the Mandarin. I don't know about that. The Chinese uh, the ben... Mandarin. The, the Ben Kingsley character in the films, but uh, he might be some other orientation Ooh. in the comics. I wouldn't know. I don't read it. Yeah, the I Mandarin is always, at least as far as I know, the Mandarin has always been uh, uh, Iron Man's main villain. And and they I... tried to connect it somewhat by the terrorist cell uh, uh, that, that had kidnapped Tony, apparently having like a name like the Ten Fingers or something, which was the Mandarin's thing. He had ten magic rings that he used to, you know, do do weird stuff. I kind of like the idea of him being an alien, but still, it is what it is. Obadiah Stane is but I get, but I get your, was... But I get your point. I know Obadiah Stane was a better villain for the for the first Iron Man movie. Yeah. Like, he had the connection with the company and all that stuff. He was, like, a yep. contrast because he was, like, an evil Iron Man, basically. Hmm. Didn't Superman movies start with General Zod and they had the sequel? No. Uh, they start. They started with Lex Luthor, Lex Luthor, and then the sequel had General Zod. But okay. the thing is, Donner okay. Donner I, had set it up up to make both movies at the same time. Uh, yes, yes, and then he got kicked off because of the Saul Kinds. Very, very long story. I was confused. I thought they meant starting the movie with an arch nemesis in the first scene. I apologize. No, 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 no. I mean, like, to it's have so that primary antagonist. You want to set up the basics of the superhero world that you're giving to mainstream audiences, so they know what to expect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I, the Salkins lacked vision. The Salkins prefer to make money, and, and Donner was, was very liberal with his spending. They almost had Kojak and Superman the movie. I am not forgiving them for that. They almost had Brainiac in Superman 3. Yep. But then they had to screw it up and make do something completely different and not as I'm surprised they didn't just make it Brainiac. It's it's so weird, because it's, like it's almost Brainiac. It's, and same thing with... Uh, uh, the cut footage for Quest for Peace, they had Bizarro for like five seconds. It, it, it bugs me so much that Brainiac has not been in a movie yet. By the way, speaking speaking of the cut footage of Superman 4, what the heck was that on his crotch? It looked like this little pot or something. I never could figure that out. It's called Crotch Bulge. I, I always thought he couldn't fit the small bowl after he gets cloned or what? something. I'm not gonna go there. <laughs> It's a long story. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It just seems... Nah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So what else is there? Video games? Yeah, yeah. Video games. Um, that's another medium that both companies put their money into. You know, it's, it's merchandise, but... What is there to talk about with video games? The, the DC... Arkham Met, City. Kombat, and 
Marvel, yeah. Met, Capcom, and Arkham City. That's it. Uh, no, uh, really Marvel awesome. has the uh, Ultimate Alliance games. Uh, and DC has Injustice right now, which apparently is still making them money. I I don't play enough of the video games to know, sadly. Yeah. What is it with superhero yeah. fighting games? Like, they're 90% fighting games. It's weird. Yeah. I'm not much of a fighting game. Just an odd well, pairing. Well, I, I guess it's like the perfect idea. It's the perfect kind of game, considering... How all these, um, like, how you have all these different characters. I think that's mostly the big factor, is the large roster of superheroes that they have. Like, sure, you can do a simple beat-em-up with Superman or Batman or whatever, but, like, like sometimes people want to re- like, want to live their fantasy of have, like, this battle of Wonder Woman versus Batman, or, like, you know, it, it's kind of, like, living their dream battle or something like that. It, this it's is like, it's uh, easy to do that with fighting games. This actually, is... let me let me bring up a, a a video game in particular that I always love uh, uh, talking about because uh, it's actually an adaptation of the comics, and that would be uh, the Genesis game way back Nintendo. in the day, Spider Man Maximum Carnage. Hmm. I think I played that. Yeah, it's a beat 'em up, but it's an adaptation of the actual storyline in the game, and it's not a bad one considering they actually used the comic book cutscenes in it. Because they that's the one where you. Uh... That's that's one where um, they they turn everyday citizens against Spider-Man, and you have to you have to yep. fight those. Yep, and off. that happens in the comic too. Uh, the villainous Shriek, uh, she basically has she has like sound and a bit of psychic powers, so she kind of like whips the city up into this frenzied mob where everyone is violent and trying to kill each other, and then she manages to direct them towards the heroes who are trying to contain everything. Quite frankly, yeah. But it, the thing is that it was made by LGN. I know, right? And yet it was so. And yet it actually was really good. <laughs> There's Don't a blonde in the, in the rainbow. For this one. It's bronze. It's not shit. It's not shit. Yeah, it's I, not I always shit. thought it was. I always thought it was particularly memorable of a game because not not because I beat it or not because I got all the way through, but I can I couldn't forgive them for one ridiculous fight tactic, and that was having this one woman who would come up and hit you, and she would whip you with her hair. <laughs> I just whip my hair back and forth. Like, like, how does this, well, you how does this enough, work? You I whip my hair you know, back and oh, forth. Yo, you put enough gel in that, and it becomes a clump. <laughs> so I said, Shaniqua, I got a whip going in the back of my head. Anyway, Jada, you were saying. Quite frankly, video games have never been at the top of Marvel or DC's focus. They're usually focused on how to adapt their comic books directly when they're focusing on other mediums, and that's hard to do in video mm -hmm. game form. Right. The only... These video games haven't made a very big impact on mainstream non-comic culture, except for the Arkham games. Mm, yeah, that is Because true. the Arkham games do focus on... do focus equally on story as much as they do... as they and do also, game mechanics. Yeah, but they follow Batman. up... But they, but they follow their own story versus, uh, uh, you know, something they adapted. Mm. Yeah. yeah, and I well, think that's kind of... Arkham... It, is, it is loosely based on A Serious House on Serious Earth. Eh, having, uh, having read A Serious House on Serious Earth? Not really. Well, it involves Arkham Asylum and the Joker. Well, yeah, it involves Arkham Asylum, but yeah. Well, that's very loose. The, Ar the, Arkham, the Arkham games, as I, as I acknowledge it, as I, can, as I can figure it out, they, they have created their own universe based on all, all of the previous universes. All of the previously established Batman material, it's uh, it's just um, they 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 pick and choose for, for what they want. Even as far as uh, the the 1960s Batman TV show, and they they say, okay, we're gonna we're gonna introduce this little element, and sometimes they'll just do something and stick it in the background. Uh, that's that's the level of creativity and love that they that they put into those games, and that's why they they work so much. Yeah, but too bad like everybody just puts on the X-ray mode, so they don't see that. It's detective vision, Matt, and it's a very serious <laughs> piece of technology. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And you as well, okay? I want to <laughs> see the crazies coming before they jump on me. Oh no, I agree. It's very useful, but it's like. It's too bad you can't really, like, they, there's, like, so much detail, like, you want to see, but you can't because, like, it's really important to use. 
That's the no, one but... thing I really like the grappling hook, but every time I I I use that in in the the combat scenarios, I was I always have to be like, get over here. Yeah, Mortal but Kombat. the one thing I will say about like the video games, like outside of like those really good ones, I think like the it, it's like what you said, Jada. It, it's not the main focus. So what happens is that right. they right. just use it as kind of a marketing tool to promote other stuff, you know, like uh, like to promote the TV show or the movie. Sometimes the, it can lead to great results. Uh, a good example is Batman for the NES, which was, mm -hmm. it's a movie licensed game for the Tim Burton movie, but it ended up um, like people who have played it, they do find it's it a, really challenging, but a great game. It's a good game. I actually, mm -hmm. uh, I remember that one. They, uh, that funny story actually there was uh, uh we used to have a we used to have an electrical piano game uh go along with our uh go along with our nintendo and there was oh, at yeah. one point where we mm -hmm. yeah the miracle piano system yeah at one point we turned that off and we we popped in we popped in batman after that this is totally true. This was before were you James able to Rolf did a video. The Batman NES game with the keyboard? <laughs> no, 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 no. We we told we found this out completely by accident. You know, I'm not uh, I'm not kidding. The uh, but yes, the the game the the keyboard would would play the game like it was a, a built-in demo or something. Huh. Wow, that's incredible. I, and it, it, James Rolfe made a video on it, and I was like, wow, I'm, the, I'm not the only one who noticed this. Of course. I, I do want a couple of the really lesser-known Marvel video games that I like, like Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions. That's actually pretty good. Um, X-Men, what was it, Genesis? X-Men 1 or 2, because like there were two of them in, uh, uh, there were two of them in, on, for the Genesis. Genesis. Not, not, not for the Genesis. It was, it was called Genesis. Genesis. I think it was, it was for the Xbox. Uh, okay. Actually, one I heard that was uh, that people keep on saying that is good is apparently Spider-Man Two for the Nintendo GameCube. Uh, the most that I heard that people really do love is that uh, pretty much web, when you do web slinging, it actually people keep on saying that you really do feel like Spider-Man when you do that. Mm -hmm. So it's both oh, a good yeah. example of like a comic book video game and a movie licensed game, funny enough, so I'm surprised yeah. no one I'm surprised no one brought up Batman Returns for the Super Nintendo and the Super uh, not the Super the Sega Genesis. It's pretty much just a side scroller beat 'em up mash 'em up fight 'em game. See this is the this I I was gonna try and mention this earlier. When it comes to video games, one of the advantages that you don't necessarily have to do Except for um, the cases of Arkham, Arkham Asylum, uh, is story, uh, for the most part, is is not, is is not all that important. What's mm -hmm. important is oh, yeah. how much ass you can kick. Exactly. And, uh, with and hopefully, if you if you just uh, if you make a solid, if you make a, a solid action game, and it spawns a sequel. All you have to do is kick a little more ass with the sequel. Yep. You know, add a few more, add a few more bells and whistles. Yep, exactly. Well, it, it, it Peter Parker, so you have to up the ante with down. the story. You have to I... up the ante with the story in films. In in games, it's just the tech. It's just the technology. It's the game mechanics. I it's the. Uh, it's what you can do. You Jade, are going. I personally take a lot of stock in the story elements of video games. I don't think I'd be half of interested in Batman Arkham Asylum slash City slash Night if it didn't have all the cool Batman stuff and the voice actors and the plot. That's the exception right there. I think. I well, think. Then again, uh, I'm not much of a gamer. You know, mm -hmm. I, I I don't do fancy fight moves. I just press X. That's more from like an example of Arkham, like the Arkham games. That's pretty much for the modern video games. What James is referring to, like the beat 'em ups, that's more for like the older ones, like for SNES and the NES, and like, you know, the the ones where bits were important. Mm -hmm. Well, in the older games, the games really didn't have stories to begin with. 
like there you go. Very simple. So that was just the world of video games in general, not just. That's the that's my point. That's my point. Nowadays, we're are arguing different. the same point here. <laughs> I'm just saying nowadays things are different. We've got our Fallout's and our The Last of Us's. You know, mm -hmm. games need to have Last stories and our Bioshocks. Oh my God. Well, the was the for the Spider-Man games though was the story necessarily all that brilliant or was it just or was Shattered it just getting Spider-Man? Huh? Shattered Dimensions? Do you mean? I mean, just in in recent years in general, is it uh, is it a a story it or is it just story. a reason for getting getting Spider-Man from one uh, level to another to fight another boss? Well, first of all, none of the Spider-Man games recently have been very successful. So I don't know how good they are as examples. But, you know, they have stories. They're not like Batman Arkham Asylum. But they're not like NES level either. The, yeah, from from what I could tell, the last time, it, it's been a while, but the last time I played it, the last time I played a Spider-Man movie was, uh, a Spider-Man yeah. Spider game was... An adaptation of Spider-Man that was done for the uh, for the first Sam Raimi film, and that was pretty much mm -hmm. like following. Uh, that was pretty much like following the not just the movie, but following the story of uh, of an action game from back in the day. So, I think I remember playing the one for the GameCube, and they had elements like Electro and the Vulture in there, and I at times got confused. Cause it's sort of like, okay, there's a thin line being tread here. Is this based on the movie or the comic? And the essential storyline is, yes, it's being adapted from the movie despite some creative, creative liberties in certain spots, which really threw me off at times. Because it's like, I've, this character is not in the film, so where do I place this game? I've played movie license games that have absolutely nothing to do with the movie. It's just Lewis, like have you played it? doing an adventure altogether. Uh, Lewis, Lewis, you're rather quiet here. What's uh? Yeah, have you played any of the games or like? Uh, in terms of like movie licensed uh, comic book uh, uh, games, not that many. Uh, like I said, I I grew up as a Genesis kid, so the so Maximum Carnage really was the extent of uh, uh, you know comic book stuff, and most and for video game front, and eh, not that many. I did, I did play uh, the Avengers game for it. Uh, I, I think it's just the Avengers, actually. Uh, the really Avengers. Did. Yeah, that's the one. Yes, terrible, yes. Terrible uh, voice acting. Well, <laughs> I say voice acting. Really, it was the one guy I think who did all the voices. Uh, what, and what really terrible translation, villain? too. What was that one villain that uh, he did some sort of screwdriver attack uh, across the screen Feel with this my really... power! <laughs> it, it was so <laughs> weird. It was... Uh, he'd go across the screen, and this was his attack... This was his attack. He like uh, pretend, pretend this is him. I got a sharpie marker. Just uh, you'd be like, uh, nobody's gonna see it. Yeah, it was basically a whirlwind kind of guy. I can't remember what his name was. Yeah, isn't that some kind of Street Fighter move? I don't know. Might yeah, be, I think you, so. But yeah, it was a Same beat him up. It was kind. Of, it was kind of fun. It had nice sound effects. You take on a sentinel at one point. Huh? Oh yes. Interesting. Yep. The many, the many hours that were spent with that game, it was bliss. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, one of my favorite video games out there was Marvel vs. Capcom, and I remember going to the arcade, and there was this huge console for it, and I, and I played it a couple of times, and I was like, it is so glorious, like, oh my gosh, it was the best game I ever played in my life. Like, oh man, I was in heaven. So much in heaven. Marvel vs. Capcom. I I got introduced to that actually in college. There was a there was a, a a cafeteria that we that we had in there with uh, this little arcade corner with only three arcade games. It was Arrow Fighters, uh, Tekken Three Tag Tournament, and Marvel vs. Capcom. And I played the hell out of that. And I was just like, why why where have you been all my life? The and most that, that I. And sadly, that uh, I've been back to college since then, and I found out they they took all the arcade machines out Ooh. and turned that into the study hall. Aww. I remember back when I was a kid, like my my first introduction was pretty much with Marvel vs. Capcom 2. And back then, 
I didn't really know much about fighting games. The most that I knew was mm -hmm. pretty much Super Smash Bros. and stuff like that. And I was just purely amazed by the amount of oh, characters yeah. that they fit in. Like, like I, I was just standing there. It's like, who do I pick? I recognize some of them. Like, I don't know this cactus guy, but I know Wolverine. Like, I was just... Uh, like, yeah, they had Marvel and Capcom. I was Capcom just purely amazed so many... by the roster. I have one interesting thing to bring up, and it's actually related about the movies, and it's one thing that I feel the biggest thing regarding against Marvel versus DC in the modern DC films is pretty much the amount of fun. I feel like it's one of the biggest factors about like the modern superhero movies, because with Marvel, they pretty much captured that very well, because they know that the concepts of what they're doing does a bit have like does have some kind of silliness to it because like it is a superhero movie after all so they do try their best <laughs> okay maybe there are a few exceptions but oh yeah they do try their best Pink to um, oh, you yeah. know just go out and have fun with it they don't limit themselves to whatever fun that they to like what fun that they have and like this is why nowadays like the avengers and guardians of the galaxy are highly remembered and highly popular is because of the amount of fun that the characters are having which translates to what the people are having dc on the other hand i'm not saying that they don't have fun elements um in films like the dark knight uh, or like pretty much the chris nolan batman mm -hmm. trilogy the most important like one of the most memorable aspects is pretty much the villain the villains whether it be the joke the heath ledger joker or bane like they add this element of fun this weird craziness or just through yeah. their personalities it's just fun but like one of the biggest issues is how serious they take themselves like they really want to make it into this how superheroes are in this big world and they want to implement these heavy subjects but like you know it doesn't really make it fun and what ends up happening is that people end up mocking it like everybody loves the michael michael keaton batman but we all make fun of the well we all make fun of this guy like the christian bale batman because mm -hmm. like the dark, dark brooding dark voice brooding. i want to try to be serious please take me serious with my dark and scary groan like groany voice i am so yeah. threatening yeah, and you know, yeah. for that Keaton, it was actually it was actually intimidating by whispering more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you know, and the irony is, is that the most fun now recently that a DC mm -hmm. movie, like, pretty much the most fun people had with the DC characters is unfortunately not really a DC movie. It's from mm -hmm. this. Lego, Lego, Lego movie. Lego movie. What, like, why did you even bring that up? I gotta, I gotta hear. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I feel weird personal. Uh, okay, I'm sorry, tonight. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but it's just that... Okay, here's the thing. It's just, I just brought this up because Bat, like, Lego Batman is pretty much something that came out of nowhere, but it's kind of an interesting example of a, a character, an anime, uh, not an animated character, but pretty much this comic book character, but now taken into this entirely new light I've because like a movie. this Batman is unlike anything we've ever seen and like it's a Batman is... who's completely self aware of how awesome he is. Yes, pretty much. You know, on oh the other God. hand, the Marvel films do have the problem of over what what do they call it? Over inflation, where there's just getting to be too much of it. And they're kind of just doing the same stuff. Because they know mm -hmm. that it works. Yes, they're bringing in more and more characters, but story wise they're not really doing anything different they're just getting kind of repetitive and that's not going to last them not forever really. this is why i kind of gravitate towards the x-men films oh shit mostly because they reach kind of like a happy medium you know they're they're more well, fun the x-men films and the than... x-men films oh let's talk more... about the x-men films they're more fun and energetic and like comic book-esque than the dc films but they they kind of go go to that higher standard of storytelling that Marvel has really yet to do. They they don't just do the whole we gotta find a MacGuffin and beat a bad guy over and over again. They like talk about shit. They 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 do something different like every movie. They did time travel last time and somehow they made it work while also being serious and tackling these big implications and having fun in the process. They do both. That, Plus I that's just really because, like the X Men. That, that's right. because 
That's because with uh, with the with the X Men films, the o- the overall standard of the entertainment quality is kind of like this. This is a peak right here, dipped, and then come right back up again. It. Uh, okay, look, it doesn't always work. Obviously, not all of the X Men films are particularly good, but X-Men at least they're first trying class, different things. X Men First Class was amazing. Screw you. But anyway. But oh, X-Men are... oh, let's. Let's have this out right now. <laughs> no, but listen, let's listen to me. X Men Three, yes, it, it it was a mess, but at least they were like trying to do something different with the whole we're gonna right. find a cure and the whole Jean Grey becoming evil thing. They they were exploring things that comic book movies have done yet. They did the same the same with the Wolverine movies, even though it didn't quite work. They were like trying to tread new ground. I I, I much more admire a film studio that's ambitious but doesn't always succeed than a studio that constantly succeeds by just doing the same shit over and over and over and over and over again. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And and for the record, no, I didn't think X-Men that 3 was that bad either. X-Men but first? X-Men First Class was. How are you even... How do I even exist? Sorry about that. My girlfriend Talk called. Let me know she got home safe. Because... Because, be, because oh. X-Men First Class made me side... With the villain more than the heroes. The idea was that the villain was... Wait, are you referring to Sebastian Shaw or Magneto? Magneto. The idea is that he, you're supposed to understand his plight. It's supposed to be a legitimate question, like, whose side are we really on here? You're, it's supposed to be ambiguous. Mm-hmm. You're not and supposed I felt to like consider I was... the heroes are saints and the villains are evil. It's not, and... it's not that black and white. That's what makes it different. And and yet, I've, for some reason, I wanted to follow him at the end of the film more than the so you know the the so good. called good guys. Because it was ambiguous. Cause you can like genuinely find yourself choosing a certain side. That's not always the side that you know society would necessarily want you to. It's 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 the fact that I'm it's making you sympathize with the villain. There's a reason I, why Pete, why Marvel occasionally sells Magneto was right T-shirts. Yeah, like you're not, it's not a bad thing that the villains are not Satan and the heroes are not saints, and you might actually agree with the villains at some point. That's different from what many other superhero movies do, but that doesn't make it bad. Hmm. It, it, was, it was intentional, what you interpreted, James. It wasn't a mistake. Uh, it's, it's not what I prefer to get out of a superhero film. Yeah, oh, let, me, let me put it that way. What, what so, say you on that? Say you uh-huh. How dare this, this 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 movie make me think? I will admit, um, I to be very honest, like X Men Three is actually the one that I've probably seen the most out of the X Men movies. But I will admit, I kind of do like the I actually do like X Men Three because it actually is kind of interesting, where it, it kind of shows a lot about the concept of how society doesn't really like. Um, you know, the mutants and stuff like that, so you often see protests. Um, and also, like like Jada said, um, like you do get a point of view from the villains and stuff like that, and that is something that I really do admire. Like, um, when they really do flesh out characters that are not the main, like, hero and stuff like that, especially, like, when it's the villains, when they really do give out, like, exp- like explanations of how they come to be and, like, like, what their likes are and, like, what their purpose is. And it's, like, it's really, really interesting. And, it, you know, it's really cool to see, like, this new side of Magneto and stuff like that and his relationship with his bro. So, like, I feel... So, yeah, definitely. I feel like... I don't know. I feel like it might have get some harps, but, like... Like, I agree. It's, maybe, maybe it's not the best... X Men movie out there or stuff like that, but it's certainly not the worst. I definitely do enjoy it. Mm-hmm. I mostly just don't like the way they treated Jean Grey's character and Cyclops and Professor X and Angel <laughs> and Colossus. I think also going with uh, superhero films, there's also some concepts that will never get off the ground either because of the limited technology at the time or just because certain things will work better on paper than the comic. Um, in my teen years, I got around to see Howard the Duck, and I saw it as more of a curiosity. But yet later, mm-hmm. when I got this marvelous gem right here, I remember reading 
the comic straight through, well, it's a Some reprint, go figure. And just thinking to myself, good lord, there's just so much material in here that you just can't do justice in a movie. It's this whole satirical, upside-down idea that there's more Stranger Things than a duck on planet Earth. Like, seriously, I think Midway, they had a villain named Dr. Bong who kidnaps Beverly Switz, and he's pretty much just a man with a giant bell on his head. That's as far as I'm going to go with it. But even today, you can take strange concepts like that and make them fly just because of the technologies up at the time. We got smart writers in their hands. But even then, you do have that line where will it fall into the wrong hands and how it will be developed. Okay. Even just recently, oh, hold on a second here. Uh, even just recently, if you guys don't know, they rebooted the character. And I sort of like the direction it's going into. I haven't picked up the second issue yet, but I am curious where he crosses over Rocket Raccoon. But just the basic idea that they're trying to keep these characters fresh in a new, different light for next generation, see where it goes, try something different. Whether it works, whether it fails, it depends on the new and the old. Whether it holds a candle to the original and its sheer stupidity of enjoyment, or whether it's too serious or too comedic and dumb. Hey, did you guys know that Howard the Duck was the first ever Marvel film? Yeah. Uh, technically speaking, unless well, you... Well, in 1944, Captain America had a 12... Part um, serial, so that doesn't really. That wasn't a movie, movie though. I'm talking like movie cinematic in theaters. Right, right. Yep, and it's all thanks to George Lucas for bringing Howard Duck to the screen. Thanks, yeah. John. So thanks, Lu Lucas. And uh, Lewis, I'm gonna say if you have any beef with Howard movie and comic, I'm just gonna say I have an appreciation for the character for its cynicalism, though I do have a huge appreciation cynicism. for the movie. Okay. So um. Yeah, if you have anything to... Thank you. Cinephilism. That movie is garbage. Oh! oh. Why? Oh, it, it, it really is, it's though. A, like, it, it's, it's, it's not just that the pleasure, concept actually. is stupid, it's genuinely a bad movie. It's the execution. It's, it's, I, I, I love it because it's so bad. It... I, it, I, just wish, I just I just wish Howard was more cynical in the film like the comics as I think that's where the comic really hit a stride because he's such a nasty character and he's playing off I'm of these honestly people. Not, I honestly don't know enough about Howard the Duck himself. I know I know about all the satirical elements you talk about, but I've never actually read one myself, so he I'm went not up the guy against to talk to a giant directly. Frankenstein monster out of gingerbread. How can that I know not he was in Marvel serious? Zombies four. <laughs> Sorry, Marvel Zombies 5, he teamed up with, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Machine Man. And they went and killed zombies together. Iron Fist, I believe. What was Iron yeah, Fist? See, that's... I think it was Iron Fist. Yeah, and see, that's kind of the, the treatment that he, that the character gets now, is that, uh, for the past several, uh, years, he's, he's either, they just sort of toss him in the, in the, in the background in the fight scene or he's he's there for the punchline of a joke uh -huh. exactly. and that's a shame because i i do i do think that he's an interesting character uh mm -hmm. they have uh they have this one spider-man cartoon the, what was the most recent spider-man cartoon the ultimate spider-man ultimate spider-man Spider ultimate Spider they i was showing this to morgan one time they had they had one scene where uh peter parker as Spider-Man breaks into uh, into uh, uh, Dr. Connor's laboratory looking for something for a science fair experiment, and uh, he's looking at uh, looking at all the different items that are around the, the room, and he says, "To this, to that, eh, to this, too technical, too too historical, whatever," and then he comes across Howard the Duck who's trapped in a bubble, and <laughs> Howard turns to look at him and says. I'm warning you, I know quack foo. And Spidey just says, Actual line eh, in the too movie. weird. I think that was a line in the movie, actually. Yes, it was, yeah, It was, oh. it was. And there's even a whole issue where he learns kung fu and he goes against these bullies. I, I just want to add one thing. Like, I know this is really, really unrelated, but uh, the one thing about Howard the Duck I remember, I, re like... It was related to this, and it's the weirdest movie reference I have ever oh, seen, like, in my entire life. I know life. what you're talking about. Oh, yeah. I know what you're talking about. And it's about. from, okay, it's actually from uh, Planes, Fire, and Rescue. And yes, that like the Disney Planes movie. And there was one scene where they picked out all the DVDs, and then suddenly they picked out a VHS 
and the main character is like, Howard the Truck? And I was just there, like, <laughs> out of all the things, a Disney movie, oh like, my God. A, a Disney Cars World movie makes a well, reference to freaking Howard the Duck? Disney I just owns Howard the Duck now. I just find it to be the weirdest movie reference yeah, I've ever really I've obscure. ever heard in my life. So there you go. Then they have uh, that they use the character for for punchlines like that. Yeah. My point exactly. Oh, the yeah. bird's going down. <laughs> yeah. It, it, in essence, I think both DC and Marvel, if I can go way way back, could take a page out of the X Men movie Fox's book. Even though everybody keeps making fun of Fox, because haha, you're neither Marvel nor DC, you must wish you were them. I think if they paid attention and learned from the X-Men movies, they would realize that they, you can do both. You can be smart and accessible. Intr like, intellectual and fun. Mm -hmm. It's possible. What say you sure. about the X-Men films, Lewis? Uh, I've sadly I own I do own First Class and Days of Future Past, but I have not actually watched them. I've seen the first three though, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I'm not big on the first three. I get, I do understand Ooh. and agree with what you're saying about uh, about about being you know smart and superhero movies. The problem I have with the first three, upon reflection, because I loved them when I was younger, but nowadays I look at them and it's like these are really silly, and not in a good way, kind of silly. These are silly just without justification for their silliness. Uh, what do you prefer, yellow spandex? <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah, actually, I do, I do prefer that, because why? Because instead you have these really tight, uncomfortable-looking black outfits for no reason. Yeah, I gotta say, Not like... Not all of them were the black outfits. Some it, of them actually, I know, but, but you, you get what I mean. It, it, it's, it was also during that time when they were trying to, where superhero movies were trying to be uh, what the DC movies are right now, like they didn't want to acknowledge the fact that every th that that these are you know these are story these are characters which have very garish attire and looks to them. But but uh, they did do so more than DC did. Like they had it's, it's, it's that it's that fear of it's that fear of looking uh, immature when they when when you know they when, and and as a result they make themselves immature by that. But uh, <laughs> and why do they need code names? Why do they need code names mm -hmm. in, in these movies? They're not going to act like they're superheroes. By the way, this is going to be very naive of me, and I do apologize for my lack of knowledge of the behind-the-scenes factor and stuff like oh, that. Oh, sorry, but... sorry to interrupt you there. But yeah, uh, I want to see Days of Future Past because I've heard lots of, lots of really, really great things about it. So just, yeah. Anyway, mm -hmm. go ahead. Anyways, but, like, the one thing I'm curious about, why is it that they kind of... Um, why is it that they ditched the yellow spandex Wolverine costume? Like, I always find that it's kind of the most icon, one of the most iconic things about the X Band franchise. Right. Honestly, well, it it's have looked that good in live action form. I don't think. It, I don't it's mind too that bright. they got rid of it. Some it, it it varies. Some creators love the yellow costume. Others prefer the uh, the brown costume that he sported for a while. Others still others think if they're all on the same team, they should have matching uniforms. So. They, so some say they should be all black together, or they should have uh, at least similar attire than just, you know, the X brand on them. Keep in mind, the first three X-Men movies came out, at least they started to come out when, in like the early 2000s, when the superhero movies as we knew them were like developing still. We yeah. were trying to mm -hmm. find our identity, and, you know, they, right. yeah. they're not perfect. I, I they're not, they're movies. not at all, and I don't, I, I don't really consider them to be bad movies, or maybe the third one, but, uh, but they're... It just, it's just hard for me to go back and watch them with, with you know, and, and think of them as, as, as good as I used to think they were. It's, it was a time in the, in cinema where, where a lot of the, a lot of the companies were, I thought what they were trying to do was uh, be like the Matrix, you know, in terms of the darker, uh, the, the darker attire and whatnot, but. You know, because that was just, that was a thing that was going on at the time. Or maybe it's like what Doug Walker says. It's like, it's pretty much, like, from his chronolo chron chronological, I can't say the word. God, what word are you trying to say? Chronological. Chronologically confused. Chronological, yeah, chronological. His chronological, like, movie standpoint of summer movies, where 2001 was at the end of, like, that moment when everything was crap and stuff like that, so... I guess, like, I can see the influence. 
the X-Men movies, in my opinion, have been getting better and better since X-Men 3 kind of made them all reconsider what they were doing. <laughs> like, maybe we should change some stuff, because that didn't work at all. Was killing off Cyclops really a bad idea? I didn't think yes. so. Yes, because Cyclops is awesome. He the might be good, don't but... Know it, I... and they don't that treat movie like just hated awesome. Cyclops for the some reason. The movies hated Cyclops, and that, that is a Yeah, problem. that is true. Kind of... I know why they did it. He's I know badass. why they did it. Read the X-Men comics. Cyclops can be badass when he's written I like, that way. I like okay. Cyclops just fine. It's it's just so bizarre that just, like, how much how much disrespect that... that it, it's, it's like if Wolverine himself wrote that movie. I know why they did it. The badass hero who Gene really loved. I know why they did it. They 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 couldn't write they couldn't write him in there, all the way because uh, he had scheduling conflicts to be in. Uh, he was going to be in the uh, Superman Returns movie as as well, so they had to. Uh, they felt like they had to kill the character off. Yeah, it's true. Like um... I, I, like. For me, at least, I feel like Cyclops is, next to Wolverine, is, like, the second most memorable um, X-Men character, all, along with, like, Storm and Dr. Xavier. It's kind of funny how, like, they, they really did not give a crap about Cyclops in this. I mean, like, for a guy with laser beams coming out of his eyes, it's like, he does help you to save think the day that the they really movie. want to market that badly. He does help to save the day in the first movie. He does play mm -hmm. oh, yeah. on climax. I'm surprised. I was about to say, I'm surprised you made it all this way without talking about Age of Ultron. Cause, uh, cause some of us oh, haven't seen it on. yet, Morgan. Yeah, we haven't seen it. Spoilers, God. Spoilers, Ultron's in it. <laughs> come on. Spoilers, That's it true. has no, a no, no, surprising no. lack of strings. <laughs> oh god. If there's one thing I want to know about spoilers, do they sing, I got no strings, like in the trailer? Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Oh my God, really? More than once. Oh my goodness. Well, I oh, only recall what? the one time. No, no. There's one in the factory. One in the area where he's flying around. He's shooting people, going, "I got no strings, so I have time to fire them down." Oh my God. Thanks for that, Mark. Oh. Uh, that. Now I have to envision that in James Spader's voice. It's <laughs> the best interpretation <laughs> since Lana Del Rey. Uh. Anyway, we'll stop spoiling it for you. So yeah. Okay. Long story short, it's a good sequel. I, I think it's a good sequel, but... <sighs> I'm sorry, I got spoiled with Guardians last year. I think that is the highest point Paul can go with its characters and its story. Age of but Ultron... Yeah, Story-wise, Guardians of the Galaxy wasn't that different from the Avengers. It was just a group of people oh, getting together was... to find a MacGuffin and beat a bad guy. Live and action Futurama, I had so much to connect with. Space Avengers, come on, Space Avengers. The characters aren't much as they could have been. The Avengers will The Avengers will be my reigning champion of of favorite uh of favorite MCU uh films simply because si sitting down and watching that I was just like mm, popcorn 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 you'll kind of you'll kind of You'll kind of get the same feeling of this film, but I wouldn't say it's the Godfather 2 of sequels. I'd say it's a, an enjoyable summer blockbuster what film. What besides Godfather 2 would you say is the Godfather 2 of sequels? Toy Out Story 3? Uh, Star Trek 2. 2. Star Trek 2, Rathacon, is the Godfather 2 of sequels. It's just... Huh. Uh, it's a different kind of context with the fact that it's based on the show... I meant comparison. Yeah, I'm off topic we, here, guys. Yeah. So uh, let me get back on topic yeah. here. Um, we mentioned about how Marvel's fun and DC's all brooding and dark, but you know Marvel has the dark tones, cause um, you got no. films like um, yeah. um, Punisher. Uh, Punisher, yes, yes, the Punisher, Blade, Ghost Rider, and these films are just have dark tones compared to the MCU. And that's kind of cool, because they're trying to mix it up a notch with both elements of dark and fun. So the question is, do you guys like, you know, fun films or dark and brooding more? That's what I want to know. Because I, I like both as an equal, but I just want to know your thoughts on it. I want both. That's why I watch X-Men. I'm super excited okay. for Apocalypse. See? Uh, now see? You don't, have, you don't have to put Marvel in the corner and say... 
every everything's fine and everything's fine and dandy because because really it's it's not i mean it you might as well just look at the world and say everything is fine and dandy well not everything in dc is supposed to be dark and broody either like superman's usually pretty chipper and yeah mm -hmm. here we are oh right right it's usually batman superman there was a time when people don't consider him a false god mm-hmm Hey, save you from America! Yay! <laughs> yeah. Hey, he rebuilt the Great Wall of China with his eyes. In Gumby Vision. Nice. Yeah, I'm just disappointed that I'm just disappointed when Apocalypse comes out because John Colicos is not going to be voicing him. Ah, uh, that is true. Uh, so I wanted to go back to television for a moment because Netflix has the Marvel series going on, and Daredevil is one of them. And my god, Daredevil is, like, really cool right now. He's got Daredevil Foggy. You got Nobody King Pinhead. Keep your eyes out for Rosario Dawson. Yep, yep, she's in there, too. She's pretty good in it. It's just, like it's really good right now. I feel like people are forgetting Michael Clark Duncan because they keep talking about the new Kingpin. I just want to make it clear. Nobody is replacing Michael Clark Duncan ever, you hear me? It's not he, gonna he was a good Kingpin. <laughs> yeah, he was. He was a yeah, phenomenal he was a good one. Kingpin. He was the best, he was the best part of that movie. Yeah. yeah. Oh. And in Bullseye. Yeah. I was about Rest to say, in, like, Rest Colin in Peace, Firth, Mike. I mean, like, Colin Bullseye's Firth. cool, but there wasn't nearly enough of him. He mm -hmm. was way underplayed. Kingpin at least had presence. Right. And uh, it's, it's, it's an interesting twist in this series because you get to know the Kingpin's backstory more with it. And with this new Netflix series, they're kind of leading up to, like, their own Avengers with, you know, a.k.a. Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, Iron Fist, now the Defenders. I'm kind of excited to see where they're going with this new Netflix series. I mean, if you haven't seen Daredevil, I highly suggest you go watch Daredevil. Like, seriously, go watch it right now. Like, after this podcast, just go watch all 13 episodes. It's really worth it. I mean, it's, like, really gruesome as well. Like, there's blood. It's, like, yeah, they, MA. they... If they, uh, the one defining moment in the, in the Daredevil series so far as I'm watching was the very tail end of, of episode two, where they have this, they have a really really terrific uh, fight with uh, you know Daredevil and all these different guys, mm -hmm. and what's terrific about it is that, is that it, it's not like so many fight scenes where you have. There's so many cuts all over the place. It's showing you this the camera from a stationary uh, a one shot. perspective, it's, it's and it just shot. sort of travels around. It's a one. It's one great big one shot, and you're wondering, like, how many times did they get the this? Choreography's great. Oh yeah, it's the best part of the show. Choreography's great. Oh yeah, he he's doing these halfway flip kicks and whatnot, and you're like, you have to. You have to nail this once. You you can't screw this up. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Like, like I said, that there's blood, there's guts. I mean, it's very, very dark compared to the other darker Marvel movies. Like, that's what I was like. Oh my gosh, woo! That's kind of gruesome. Like, yeah. But there's, I mean, there's other Marvel. I I don't. That's the thing. I haven't talked much in this podcast, as you may notice. I mean, I love Marvel more. But you own more DC movies. But, why'd you bring that up? Yes, I did. That's my ace in the hole oh, here. God, I mean... I will, I, will, I will say this much about the Defenders series. If they're going to go the new Defenders route, which I highly doubt, it's going to be interesting how they're going to tackle the Cloud storyline, considering how it goes from a female to a male. Some point. I highly doubt they're... And I believe I still have that issue too. It's number 127. I don't think that you're going to do that at all. It was in the which... 80s, go figure. Um, which is that, DC or Marvel? Marvel. 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 But uh, I do, yes, I do have a lot of DC imprints. I mean, I guess when it comes to. Oh. I guess when it comes to imprints, I. The Defenders! <laughs> Anyways, yeah, the, def the imprints are just, I guess, are really good when it comes to DC, but otherwise I don't mind any other ones i mean i guess the imprints are kind of important too because they're different beyond do you have jonah i uh, no, i have the losers and constantine well, i want to should. see that is that good you should get on though mm, <laughs> of course not. no jonah hex is meh 
it's not really that good. I mean, it's a western for crying out loud. Mm -hmm. What? Jonah Hex is not the most adaptable no, comic book no, character. No, no, not at all. Not even close. Why don't we have him in the future with a laser gun? That would be badass. <laughs> totally badass. That Lazy. was a thing that happened in the comics once. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, there are a lot of things that happened in the comics with Jonah Hex. The uh, movies did, you... did have Jonah Hex have, like, high-tech gear. They just didn't build up to him. They were just like, hey, here's a cowboy yep. with high-tech yep, gear. Exactly. Deal with it. Yep. Mm. Didn't quite work. Yeah, they should have done it way better. Uh, did you do an episode on that? We, I just sort of missed it. No, but I'm sure I will eventually. Of course. All right, well, send me a text or something when you do, because I'd like to see that. Of course. Yeah, you could. It was just a, a storyline. Westerns were Westerns were on the on the outer, and they wanted to keep the character around, so they sent him into the future. I mean, that's genius, actually. Really genius. Oh wow. So I wanted to wrap this up here a little bit here. So uh, when it comes to company wise, like, what do you like? You like Marvel, DC? I'm more of a Marvel guy myself. Mm -hmm. Company wise, I prefer Marvel. Movie wise, I prefer X Men. Nah, so Marvel. I th uh, I th DC makes better video games. I, I think we all walked in with a, a certain prerogative, and we're probably going to walk out with the same opinion. Probably, yeah. DC, get your act together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. Because I, just, I think I speak for everyone when I say, like, we all come in going, Marvel, 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 sit. Let's talk about Marvel. Yeah. So, and, and that's kind of the thing. Like, for now, I, I think I'm going to say Marvel... For now, because you never know in the future if DC is going to change up their acts and like suddenly they'll do something magical and make something that can even outshine DC. You never know. So, for now, Just, this see. league is going to kick if, ass. If DC gets less colorless and haughty about themselves, and they'll have a lot to work with, they could very easily outdo Marvel. They're just too hung up on their own idea of what they think their movies are supposed to be. If they get over that, then they're golden. I appreciate what DC is trying to do, especially with some of their past material, but I think this is the point we need to say, okay, we're not just doing anything serious, we're doing entertainment too, we have an audience here, Marvel, what else can I say that hasn't been said? Mm -hmm. Suicide oh. Squad all the way. I still am oh. curious about the name. Nobody cares about Will Smith anymore. I, I no, really but I want to see Jared Leto in that, in that makeup. Right. Jared Leto's a scumbag, so. Ooh, come let on. Let me just be frank. Let me let me just be frank. I'm a little iffy about the title Suicide Squad because I keep thinking about General Otto from Monty Python and the Life of Brian. Oh, jeez. <laughs> we yeah, are Suicide them. Squad. Well, would you rather them call themselves Task Force X? This is Just what they're technically them. called. Which is what they're technically called in the comic. So yeah. yeah. Actually, if I can have it's one. Not say really about as if I could just have one say about Suicide Squad is that so far from what I've seen with Jared Leto's Joker, I don't really like his design. And for my reason is that I don't really see I don't really see him as the Joker. With the way they design him, I feel I feel like this is one of Joker's goons more than the Joker himself. Like this is who the Joker sends to distract Batman to do his stuff. He looks he more looks like, like the creeper. I give it that much. He looks mm -hmm. like the Joker and Victor Zazz. Yeah, we're gonna like, get Harley Quinn here too. Mm-hmm. It's like with the with the Jared Leto Joker, like we just see Joker next to him going, "Hello, bats. Have you met my new friend Jared? I think you two will have a lot in common. So I'll have you talk with him. I'll be out now. Ta-ta, bats." Would calling him Melvin be a little too obvious? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> Nice. Oh, Throwing that out there, like. Oh, good. Now, let us nope. not get. No. Now, let's not get. Now, let's get. Now, let's not get started in that discussion, shall we? <laughs> oh boy. This is why we have this channel, awesome guests, instead of the other. <laughs> Theme song! This is the theme song for Linkara! Yeah! Theme song! This is the theme song for Linkara! What? Theme song! Theme song! This is the theme song for Linkara! Oh! He sits on his couch! He reads comic books! I knew I shouldn't use that 
that one instead of the gunslinger theme. Yes! <laughs> I knew it! Okay, so... Linkara! That was Phyllis, right? That was Phyllis. Yes, it was. I just realized halfway through, oh, that's who that is. Yeah, I did, I did the same thing. I was just like, when Morgan sent to me, I was like, oh, that's who it was. It was Phyllis. Duh. I was like, oh, Phyllis. I just remembered! <laughs> Yeah, this has been Sam Royale. Um, this has been our debate on Marvel vs. DC. Comment below what you think uh, won, Marvel or DC. Um, thanks, Louis uh, Linkara, for coming on. I truly appreciate it. No problem. And, uh, Louis, um, I know I can get the opportunity because I'm going to get tons and tons of requests, but I'm holding one in my hand that I think you might want to look down the uh, future. Yeah. Make that out at all. Oh, let me just... Oh, the Waterworld. Oh, the Waterworld comic adaptation. There's a thought. Mm. Yeah. And there's only four of them. Oh, simple. Oh, yeah. Something to think about. I gotta do the Dune adaptation at some point. Oh, no, that'd be fun. Dune. Awesome. So yeah, things. that would be good. Yeah, so, uh, for those of us coming on the next episode, the next episode for all of us would be the Dennis Hopper films. Because it's his birthday, and we're gonna celebrate his uh, filmography. Bring your, bring your pap, bring your pap's blue ribbon. It's gonna be worth it. Mhm. Mm oh yeah, Des Hopper action. Bring your monkeys and bobombs. Bring your Texas Chainsaw Massacre two reference. And keep the mutos bring out while you can. <laughs> I'm good at improv. Of course you are. Uh, yeah. So uh, our social media and our YouTubes are in the link description below. Check them out. And uh, thanks for watching. This has been Cinema Royale. Good night. See you later, dudes. Ciao for now. Nighty night. night.